Hey guys, in this video, Brilliant Mr B is going to be taking you through rounding to significant figures. Now, while this is a GCSE maths video, this is a skill you are going to need throughout a number of different subjects at a number of different levels. You need this for A-level chemistry as well. If you want more examples than the 15 that are here, then there are loads and loads of questions, lots and lots of practice just waiting for you over on my website. This is the third video on rounding, so make sure you watch the first two videos on place value rounding and decimal place rounding before you watch this one because we'll be continuing with the same methods. So the first question, we're going to round 693 and using our method, we are going to now label the different place values we have. Now, in the first video with place value rounding, we would label units, tens and hundreds. In the second video, which was decimal place rounding, we would round the decimal places. So we've got the first, second and third decimal places. Now, of course, in this question, we don't have any decimal places, so that's not going to be helpful. Now, in these questions, we are rounding significant figures. So we're going to be labeling the significant figures. And so we have the first second and third significant figures. Now, what do significant figures mean? Well, it's all about which number is the most important. So we have to judge out of the six, the nine and the three, which one is the most important number. So you might think nine is the most important number, but it's the largest number. Now, nine is in the tens column, so nine represents 90. The six is in the hundreds column, so the six represents 600 and the three is in the units column so the three just represents three so which is the most important number six is the most important number because six is the largest number there the six is larger than the nine because the six represents 600 and the nine represents 90 which is smaller than 600 so the first significant figure is six to 600 the second significant figure, the second most important number, is a 9, representing 90. And then the three units is the third most important number. It's the smallest number there. So using our rounding method, we are going to rule off after the first significant figure because we are rounding to one significant figure. We are going to keep the numbers on the left and we are going to lose the numbers on the right. So keeping the six, we're losing the nine and the three. We're not going to write six as the answer though. There's two more things to consider. The first thing is, are we rounding up? Now the first number we're losing is the nine. That is a five or higher. So we are not going to write six. We're going to round it up to a seven. Now the second thing to consider, and it's the same as when we're rounding to place values, is that the six and now the seven I've rounded up is in the hundreds column. So I should be writing 700, but I've only written seven. So when we say we're losing the nine and the three, if they're in units, tens, hundreds, or anything above there, we do have to fill them in with zeros to maintain place value. So the answer is 700. So let's try this with question two. We have 5,200 and 37. We're going to be labelling the numbers, so we're not going to label units, tens, hundreds for place value. We're not going to label first, second, third decimal places. It's significant figures, so we'll start off labelling the most important number, which is 5,000. The second most important number is 200, then 30, and then the 7. And it's always all the same pattern. You start off with the first significant figure on the left, and then it works through in order over to the right. We're rounding to one significant figure, so I'm rounding off after the first significant figure. We are keeping the five, and we are losing the two, the three, and the seven. Before we write down the answer, we have to think, hang on a second, are we gonna round up or not here? The first number we are losing is the two, so we are not rounding up. So we're gonna write down the five, and then remembering that five in the thousands column, it represents 5,000. 
when we're losing the two, three, and the seven, we have to fill them up with zeros. So we're maintaining place value, and that five is reading as 5,000. This works the same way with decimal places. So we have 3.89. When we label the first significant figure, it would be the three units. Then the eighth tenths is the second most significant figure, and the nine hundredths is the third most significant figure. So unlike place value that is only going to be in the unit tens hundreds on the left side of decimal place and decimal places, which will always be on the right side of decimal place, significant figures can be on either side of decimal place and even have significant figures on both sides of the decimal place, as you can see here. So we're keeping the three, we are losing the eight and the nine. Uh, we're going to round up. Well, the first number we're losing after the first significant figure is the 8. That is a higher than a 5, so we are rounding up. So I'm not going to write 3, I'm going to write 4. Now, you might be thinking, I've lost the 8 and the 9, so I don't need to write 0 0.00. And we don't need to write 0 0.00, because when we're saying we're finding one significant figure we only need to write down one number or one non-zero number, which is we don't need anything else there. And 4.00 is the same number as four. So there's no point writing anything else on the end. We can leave it as four. In question one and two, when we did include the extra zeros, that was just to maintain place value, but that four is still gonna be four units with decimal places or not, so that's fine. Now, question four, we have 0 0.027, running that to one significant figure. So let's label significant figures. Now, when we talk about the most important number here, it's not going to be zero units because zero units doesn't have any value. There's, there's nothing there. The most significant figure here is the two tenths. So your first significant figure always has to be the first non-zero number. And then the second most significant figure is the seven. So let's rule off after the first significant figure. We're going to keep the numbers on the left and lose the numbers on the right. So that'll be 0 0.02. But let's just check if we're rounding up. The first number we're losing is a 7. That's higher than a 5. So it won't be 0 0.02. We're rounding up to 0 0.03. Now for question 5, we have 0 0.354. The first significant figure is the three. That's the most important number there, three tenths. That's larger than the second significant figure, which is five hundredths. And a third significant figure is four thousandths. And that three tenths is also larger than the zero units. So we're starting a first significant figure, not on the first number there, it's a first non-zero number. So let's rule off after the first significant figure. That gives us 0 0.3. Before we write that down, we're going to think, are we going to round it up? The first number we're losing is a 5. So we are going to round up. So the answer will be 0 0.4. Now, let's use the same method on the medium questions. Let's start off with 49,407. We'll label the first significant figure, which will be the 40,000. The second significant figure will be the 9,000. The third significant figure will be the 400. Now, you might attempt to write the four there and to leave a gap since zero doesn't have a value, but we do need to include zeros that are in the middle, even though we wouldn't include zeros at the start. So we are going to include the zero as a fourth significant figure, and the seven will be the fifth significant figure. We're rounding to three significant figures, so we're going to rule off after the three. We're going to keep what is on the left, four, nine, and four. We're going to lose what's on the right, the zero and the seven. Now, the answer isn't going to be four, nine, four, because that four represents 40,000. And if we write four, nine, four, we've written 400. So that doesn't match up. Since we've lost the zero and the seven, we have to replace them with zeros. And now that four is still going to be representing a 40,000. Finally, we didn't round here. Now the first number we're losing is a zero. So that isn't a five or higher. So we didn't need to round up. So that is our final answer.
Now, like I did with the decimal place video, we're going to try and save a bit of time with our working out now. So when I'm rounding 5,609 to two significant figures, I'm just going to rule off after the second digit like that. So I don't need to write everything out again. We're going to keep the numbers on the left and lose the numbers on the right. Are we going to round up the first number we are losing is a zero, so we are not rounding up. So we'll write down the five and the six that we're keeping. And then since we lost a zero and a nine, we have to replace them with zeros because they were in the units and tens columns. And if we don't do that, then the five will read as 50 when it should be reading as 5,000, keeping the same place value it has in the question. So let's try that with question three. It's three significant figures. I'm running off after the third digit. So 3, 9 and 0.4 are going to be our first three significant figures. Now the first number I'm losing is a 7 so I will be rounding up. So I'm not going to write 59.4. I'll write 59.5 so I'm rounding up. Same thing for question 4. We're now rounding to two significant figures. Rule off after the second digit reading from left to right. So the two and the 0.5 are the first two significant figures. The first number we're losing is a zero, so we are not rounding up. So we're just going to keep the 2.5 as our answer. Now looking at question five, we're into two significant figures again. We're going to rule off after the second digit. So we're keeping the four and the one. The first number we're losing is a two, so we are not rounding up. So the answer will be 41. Moving on to the hard questions, we now have much longer numbers. We're using more significant figures, but it's exactly the same method. So for four significant figures, I'm going to rule off after the fourth digit, which would go here. So I have the first four digits, the nine, the eight, the nine, and the five. Now I'm going to keep everything on the left and lose everything on the right. The first number I'm losing is a nine. That is higher than a five, so I am gonna round up. So the answer is not gonna be 9.895. It'll be 9.896 instead. It's the same thing with question two, five significant figures. So I'm count up the first five digits, the one, the four, the seven. We are gonna count the zero and then the nine. So we're going to rule off here. Again, we don't count zeros at the start, which we'll see with the next couple of questions, but we do include zeros that are in the middle of our other digits. So the first number we're losing is a two. We are not going to round up. So keeping all the numbers on the left of the line, we have 1.4709. There's our answer. Now, question three is a little trickier. So I'm going to leave it the full amount of space. So we have 0.4. Eight, nine, 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 nine. We are rounding to four significant figures. So we have our first significant figure is the four, the four tenths. We're not going to include a zero at the start. Zero units has no value, but four tenths is larger than zero units. Then we have the eight hundredths is the second most important number here. The nine thousandths is a third significant figure. And then we have the fourth fifth and sixth, always in a row, the significant figures. We're rounding to four significant figures and we'll round off after the four. We're going to keep the numbers on the left and lose the numbers on the right. Now this is more complicated because the first number we're losing is a nine, so we are rounding up, but the number we're rounding up is also a nine, so that's going to round up to ten. And you can't fit ten in one space. So we're going to have to carry the one over. And if we carry the one over, that's going to go to a nine, and that's also going to go up to a 10. And so we're going to carry one over to the next column, which is the eight. So in this situation, the eight is going to increase by one digit. And our answer will start 0 0.49. Now, what we need to think about now is the question says we're rounding to four significant figures and so we have to have four significant figures. We've only got two, the four and the nine, so we do have to add two zeros on the end to make sure that we do actually have four significant figures listed. And if I just highlight the nine that we rounded up 
and the two extra zeros, you'll see that I've highlighted 900. Now, if you look at what I, I highlighted in the working out, I've highlighted 899. So the way you can think about this is, if you have to round a number up and it'll make a 10, it will carry over to the next column. Then you can include the numbers in the next column. And so I've highlighted 899, which has gone up by one to 900. Now, you might be wondering what the point of those extra zeros are. And it's all about accuracy. So if it was actually 0 0.49, for all you know, that was a larger number, 0.494, which has been rounded down. So the thousandths column could have been up to four places larger. Now, when we write 0 0.4900, the largest number that could have been, it could have been, for example, 0 0.49004 rounded down. And so the thousandth column in this situation is always going to be a zero. And the ten thousandth column is always going to be a zero. Whereas in the original, those columns could have, have been nines. So it's just saying that even though it's been rounded, you've got some idea of how accurate the rounding is and how big the largest possible number that would round down to this would be. Moving on to question four, it's three significant figures. So the most significant figure is the three hundredths. So we're going to rule off here after our first three non-zero digits. So our answer is going to be zero 0.034 and then before I write down the third digit we'll look if I'm rounding up or not the first number we're losing is a three so we are not rounding up so I'm safe to write down the four and I've only written down three non-zero digits for three significant figures now for question five the first different figure is a one unit the second different figure is the seven tenths and the third significant figure is going to be the zero thousands. Once you start writing down significant figures, then they always go in a line. You can't skip zeros once you've started with your first significant figure. So the answer looks like it's going to be 1.70. Now you might be thinking, do I need that zero on the end? And again, it's like question three. If you've been asked for three significant figures, then you have to write down three numbers. And have the one the seven and the zero. So I've got my three figures. It's important to point out again that with significant figures, we do ignore zeros at the start, like we did with question three and four, but we don't ignore zeros in the middle or at the end. Only ignore the zeros at the very, very front. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.